We've got rain barrels, which collect rainwater. Each one is 250 gallons. These are the totes, and the best place to find them is Craigslist, unless you have a friend in a warehouse who can hook you up. What comes off the roof just goes into the garden and the the garden and plants. They like the rainwater. I'd really like to have a, a metal roof on it, which is what we have up on our barn, but we'll take what we can get. So how much rain does it take to usually fill a 250 gallon barrel? It takes 250 gallons of rain to fill a 250 gallon drum of water. I haven't actually done the square footage, but when we get a half an inch of rain, our barrels are full. I don't know if I need even more for a half an inch, but I'm happy when I get a half an inch of rain because it means my barrels are full. 500 gallons of water from our storage will last about a week and a half watering our 20 by 40 kitchen garden. I can spread that out more if I know that it's a dry season. So one really nice thing to do if you have more than one barrel is to plumb them together. We have a spigot here which is what I use. It's at the bottom both tanks are open into the PVC and so I can drain both tanks out of that one spigot or if I'm doing something and want to leave it I can hook my hose up halfway and that will make sure that I don't leave it and have an empty tank and that's just my overflow it runs out onto the yard if we do get more than a half an inch of rain or I didn't empty my barrels and we get in a, a half an inch it just goes into the yard rather than flow out the top and create an erosion problem at my foundation. So here we have two more coming off of our metal roof barn. These are 250 gallons a piece coming off the gutter. We do rain barrels because we're trying to use all of the waste. Um, not that rainwater is waste, but when it's all funneled off of a large building into a gutter and then running down the hill, it's easy to erode our landscape. So we're collecting it and then letting it flow where we want it, watering new trees, garden, all those kind of things passively rather than gushing down the hill with hundreds of gallons at a time. In the city where you aren't on a well, you can catch the rainwater and it's cheaper. You're not paying for it going and coming. You catch it off your roof and water your raised beds, your indoor plants. In some states, it's illegal because they're drier states and the farmers have had a hard time keeping water on. You hear about water rights and stuff. The farmers are very conscientious of where their water comes from, way up in the mountains or whatever reservoir or whatever drainage from the city. So when you're collecting your rainwater off of your roof, they think that it should have gone into the sewer, into that pipe, into that drainage, which then would turn into their water to put on their fields. So. That's why it's illegal, from my understanding, in some places. But it's still rainwater on your roof, and I have a hard time seeing what falls on your property being claimed by whatever city or farmer. The truth of the matter is, when you collect rainwater, you're not diverting, you're not loading it up to ship it to somebody. You're not a, a water bottling company. You're putting it onto your yard or your plants, which eventually does end up in the same place. It comes full circle. Water doesn't disappear. It's just transformed. Don't be afraid to store some water and put it back into the earth when you want it, where you want it. There's an initial investment we paid. 
six of them for forty dollars a piece so that is a substantial investment and then we have PVC and parts and hoses and lines and all of that's an initial investment but when you look at the cost of seeds and trees and helping them to mature and ripen faster I mean look at your food food bill going to the grocery store it's hundreds of dollars a week or you could be putting it into some rain barrels helping you grow more sustainably so that's rain barrels any final thoughts no i don't have any thoughts <laughs>